Psalms 38. A Psalm of David to bring into remembrance. So this Psalm is to remind you. It's written that, don't forget. O Lord, rebuke. Not in David speaking to the Lord. Rebuke me not in thy wrath. And the Lord is wrathful and rebuking. You're in deep trouble. Neither chasten, that's correction, as a father with a child, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. No parent, father or mother, should ever discipline a child in anger. And if you do have that angry cause, okay, take the situation, dress it at hand, okay, this is the problem. I want to give it too much time, but I give it a little break in time, calm down, cool down. And I bring the child and explain to him, this is what the error, this is what the sin is. This is the application of the chastisement. It is according to the Bible, and you got to do it. Never, ever, ever beat a child in anger. And David's calling upon God. Says, Look, God's got to be mad at David. Or David wouldn't be saying this. For thy arrows stick fast in me. God's got those arrows and aimed them right at him. He didn't miss. I believe the devil has arrows too. God will use the devil as he did use the devil to get Job. Better realize sometimes God he will use you know, his enemy, the devil, to go after us. There's a place that wanted to pop it to talk about the battle axe. And when I grew up as a child, battle axe used to be a, a nickname for the guy's wife, he better watch out. You're talking about the devil. I don't know if they still use that term today or if I'm, if I'm archaic. Thy hand presses me sore. Now, David's getting into a thing of lamentation that I have done wrong. We'll see in a moment. And because I have sinned against God, I am getting and going to get, and I don't want the anger of God. And God has given him arrows, and God is pressing his hand against David, and David knows. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thy anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. There it is. Now, some of the troubles, some of the troubles, not all our troubles in our flesh, may be because of our sin. It may be because the devil's trying to stop us. Paul says, I was given, a, I was given a, a, a thorn in the flesh of God to keep me humble. Well, I guarantee that thorn, that thorn of the flesh was, was, was happy the devil to, to do it to Paul. I'll be all happy to do it for you, Lord. But we can't rest all our troubles, all our problems, all our diseases on the Lord. And we can't always say, God is angry with me. Sometimes life happens. We get a disease. Sometimes we cause our own diseases. We've got God. We got the devil. We got ourselves. And we got, I'm going to say, nature. Don't be too quick to blame God. Don't be too quick to blame the devil. For my iniquities, no one David said, it's me. No one else. My iniquities are gone over my head. I am drowning. David's saying, listen, I have sinned and I have sinned much. I'm saying a little sin in David's life. As a heavy burden, the sins, the consequences of sin, they are too heavy for me. Man, everything that has happened because of this sin, not only is God chastising me, but sins bring about reaping and sowing more than what you reap, and it gets heavy. It gets burdensome. And Jesus said, catch your cares upon him. Take up the yoke with him. 
So David's application of the troubles he's going through in chapter 38, and remember, I am in deep trouble, says David, because I am deep sin. And David is repenting and telling us the story. He is not blaming anybody else. He, he is not, well, you know, it's not really a sin. He, uh, you know, uh, 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 he's not making excuses. And because of the sin, he said, my wounds, uh, he's got wounds. He's got infection and affliction. My wounds stink. And are corrupted, gotten worse, infected because of my foolishness. You know, people will get bad lungs because they smoke. People get a bad liver because they drink. People will, will get an on-the-job injury because they're not paying attention. People get wounded because of sin. Again, not all wounds are sins. You're going down the road and a, a drunk hits your car. It ain't your sin that, that caused you to get in the accident. It's someone else's sin. But if you accidentally ingest poison, that's your fault. Especially if, if the thing was labeled. Sometimes sins happen by accident and you have consequences. Some, some people, their mind... And medication, they take a medication, Not real. I've done that twice in my life. I've taken an extra dose of medication, not really realizing that I've already taken a dose. So now I'm very leery. leery. But David's saying, listen, I have got purifying, stinking wounds. And you see that in Job. And Job has the sin of self-righteousness. And look what the devil did to him. And David has purifying, and he's calling sin foolish. I am in trouble. There's that word again. If you're in trouble in life, there's somebody you need to study. Job and David. You got afflictions, you got troubles, you got diseases, you got problems. The book of Job, Psalms, David, and the life of David. I am bowed down greatly. Now, Jesus in the ministry of the gospel is, is I, I don't know where he is, but but here comes this woman. She's bowed down. She's humped over. And you see many elderly people like that. They, they, they can't look up. And Jesus told us because for her case, her case, she was a daughter of Abraham being afflicted by the devil. David's bowed over from the weight and from his sins and from his injury. And it's not because of the devil. It's because of David's sin. Now, there are people on the streets, you'll see they're bowed over. They're, 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 there are people you see, I think it was, well, I've been out so many these last, this whole weekend. But it was somewhere, I saw someone walking. I was just watching this person. I got to say, man, that's got to hurt. Now, when I go up to that person and say, you know, you sinned against God, I'd be foolish. The devil's making, I'd be foolish. Maybe because their bones are old. Maybe they didn't have enough calcium. I don't, some people say, you know, get your calcium, get your vitamin, get, you know, don't get a flu shot, something like that. We don't know. That's just one of the things that happens. And when we study in the Bible the life of diseases and ailments and troubles, we got to realize it's not just one source. God, the devil, ourselves, and sin. The wages of sin is death. Okay, I got hit by a Greyhound bus. I'm dead. I died because I was a sinner. Now, the, the root cause of my death is sin. The next parallel death was the bus. And the next parallel was that. I wasn't looking both ways when I crossed the road. Every death certificate should be signed with the root cause, sin. According to the Bible, Romans 6.23. And David's been talking about all these diseases and these ailments. He's talking about, I'm bowed down. We know it's because of sin and iniquity. We know that woman that Jesus dealt with was the devil. Jesus said, I am not going to question Jesus. Somebody out in the street, maybe because of poor bones. 
Maybe it's because of sin. Maybe it's because of an accident. I go mourning all the day long. He's not a happy camper. God loves his children to chasten them. And to his enemy, he gives them wrath. Rebuke me, Lord, not in thy wrath. That's, that's not the wrath of God for his child, Old Testament or New Testament. David is thinking to the point here with all this going on, maybe I'm not God's. David is so under the, 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 the burden of his sins, and his sins are so wicked, and he's done, he's like, maybe I'm lost in the Old Testament sense. What God has done, and when I mean God, he is allowed for David, he has used pain as, I need your attention, David, and he's got it. Pain is one of those things, it's an attention getter. Okay, God, what do you want? You rang the doorbell. And our body is designed by God, our creator, that when our body part screams out, it's our body telling our brain there's something wrong here. We did not eat something that was healthy or something that was not agreeable down here. We're going to get sick. Uh, brain, this is the foot. Yes, not for me, but with my my ailment of diabetes. But for a normal person, this is yes, foot. What do you want to say? There's a nail down here in us. Got to get this nail out. <laughs> he stepped on the nail, and we get the thing of a pain to tell us, brain. Yes, fingers. He's touching a hot stove. Okay, thank you for the warning. <laughs> get the fingers off the hot stove. Now, putting your fingers on the hot stove, I mean, okay, let's just take it off. You, you, you grab a pan on the stove, you didn't realize somebody was cooking, and that pan is hot. Is it God that is giving you the pain? No, don't think so. Is it the devil? I don't really think so. It is me. It's my body saying, this pan is hot, let go of it, stupid. That's what it is. Now, maybe God did want to get our attention. Maybe God, maybe the devil wanted to burn you. But the most evident part of that, looking at that thing is my body saying, ow, need attention. I just get over an ear infection. My ear was killing me. My ear was in pain. What's my ear telling me? Nothing right in here. I know you can't see me, but I'm going to let you hear me. I'm going to let you feel me. So we can't be so quick to say God. We can't be so quick to say the devil. And then when I had this ear infection, I've had this ear infection for two months. And I am looking at God and say, maybe it's God. I say, God, are you trying to get my attention? That's, that's how we deal with pain. God, are you trying to get my attention? What is it, Lord? Is it the devil trying to stop me? Is it my own doing? Is it my body saying, hey, something's wrong? I am troubled. I am bowed greatly. I go mourning all day long. My loins, that's where, you, that's where your calves are. That's the thickest part of your body. That's the two muscles that hold you up. Are filled with loathsome disease. I'm going to take this. A lot of times, you know, we can't take it. But the Catholics take, you know, eat my body, drink my... That's not to be taken literal. Something here with David, he's talking about uh, uh, there, there's, there's, there's wounds that stink. There's corruption. There, there is his bones. There is sound. There is no soundness. In his and now he's saying he's got loads of diseases. Now, we didn't read about that in his life in the, of the kings of Samuel. We learned this is in Psalm 38. If I'm going to take it literal, there's something in his body, almost like Job. They're not boils, but hey, something wrong. And there is no soundness, again, verse 3, in my flesh. 
I'm looking at my body, and that should have healed by now. That shouldn't have been there. I think it's God doing it because of my sin and my iniquity. I am feeble, weak, and sore, broken. He is sore. He's come to the point of pain and crying out. I have roared ah, by reason of the distress, this quietness of my heart. He is screaming in pain. And he's describing like a, a lion. Roar. Lord, all my desire is before thee. I don't want this no more. And my groaning is not hidden. You hear me, God. <clears throat> and the groaning, you hear my pain. Literally hear my pain. I don't think that's to be taken. I think that's to be taken literal. My heart panteth. My strength faileth me. I have no strength. I am weak because of, of the ailments I have. As for the light of my eyes, it is also gone from me. I, I, I'm having trouble seeing. I can't see clear now because of the pain. I am suffering, God. I need you. My lovers. That's the first time that word shows up. My lovers. And my friends. Stand Allah, that's the only time that word shows up, from my sore. And my kinsmen stand far off. That's exactly what happened to Job. His wife, out of here. He says at one point his family, out of here. All his wives, they're not there. David has been not abandoned, but he has been put to distance by his family and friends. Ain't going near him. Ugh. Something about David and the condition he's in. Don't go near David. Stay away from him. That's bad. They also that seek my life Lay snares for me. Okay, we got the mental condition because of sins. Verses 1 through 11. Now, if it is because of sin and God is doing it, like David saying, verse 1, not only that, God is now sending the enemy after David. David's in no mood. David's in no place to take care of himself. And now he's got to go on the run. And if it is God, God is calling out, David! Eyes up here, please. I'm sure that God's got David's attention now. Snares are traps. And there's all kinds of snares your enemy can lay out for you. I mean, you can write books. Try to catch David in the wrong place. Try to catch David with the wrong people. With, with uh, uh, Nehemiah. They're like, come to my Let's go by ourselves and close the doors so we can kill you. And they go report to the king. You know, this, Nehemiah is trying to set up a government over there. Trying to set up a king and all that. And, you know, trying to get the government against him. They that seek my hurt speak mischievous things. They're not speaking well of me. They're, they're trying to. Now I am, I am sore. My body is sore. I am bent over. I am in distress. My enemy is trying to get me. Now they're speaking ill of me. They're bad-mouthing David. They're gossiping about David. They got tales about David. They're lying about David. They got false witnesses about David. And then when the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees come up, we need false witnesses for Jesus. They have them lined up out the door, probably around the building. You really, I think it said they, had, they found many people that would call false witnesses against Jesus. And Jesus never did anything wrong. 
He was declared, I find no fault in him four times, and yet there was a crowd of people who, you know, a lie about him. Same thing with David, same thing with the Lord Jesus Christ. And imagine, imagine deceits all the day long. They're trying to figure out how can we deceive David? How can we catch him? How can we swindle David out of his money? How can we deceive David out of his wife? How can we mess up his family? How can we break David down? How can we destroy David? How can we how can we get his brothers against him? How can we get his father against him? And they're thinking about this all the time. They're, they're not going to bed. So they're thinking, let's see, how can I get David? David is in trouble in Psalm 38. He get it from all ends. All in. I mean, if you see a compass, you got north, northeast, nor east, northeast, south, southwest. You know, you got all those directions. That's what they, they got all these directions. And David's in the middle. And all these things are coming right at him. I mean, David's getting, he's getting a hurricane. He's getting a tornado. He's getting an earthquake. He's getting a fire. He's getting all these troubles. And his reaction is, Lord, don't, rebuke me not with thy wrath. Enough already. You got my attention. Thank you. And before we go on today, let's look at Jeremiah 10, 24. Jer Jeremiah 10, 24, I don't remember it now, but it was one of the memory verses I studied when I was a young Christian. And I call the members every time I pass Jeremiah 10, 24. But, I mean, to quote it outright, I lost it. Look at Jeremiah 10, 24. O Lord, correct me. Who would have the nerve to say that? Come on, God. David said, in the state where we're in Jeremiah, rebuke me not. Jeremiah's like, bring it on. God, I've sinned. I mean, that'd be like a child going up to his father and say, Dad, yes, I did this wrong, and he's got the belt or he's got the rod in his hand. Let's go. Correct me, but with judgment, not in thy anger. Exactly what we just saw in Psalms 38.1. Least thou bring me to nothing. Now look at what David's saying. Back to the Psalms. Enough already, Lord. If you kill me, if my enemy kills me, and nothing's going to happen for your good. That's exactly what Jeremiah. Jeremiah, all right, bring it up. But give me judgment. What could be the judgment Jeremiah could be? It could be all kinds of things. A loss of something. But not life. Not where you're completely just unapproachable anymore. Even Job at chapter 42, he, he was relieved. Though we never read in Job 42, did the boils disappear? And we know through the life of David all the way to his death, he is, he's got this woman laying with him and has no sexual relations. I don't know why he's got all these wives, but he's cold, he, he's old, and he's cold, and they get this woman to lay next to him to get heat. And I, oh, finally, get with my old age. Yes, Bathsheba. Who's usurping authority of, of my government? <laughs> and then I think it's Nathan, uh, one of his prophets, one of the good prophets. Uh, you know, uh, Zadok, uh, you know, the government's being usurped right now. You know, there's another king on the throne right now, David. To the death of David. Man, he had problems. They imagined deceits all day long. But I, David, as a deaf man, heard not. I didn't want to listen to it. I got enough problems. You know what the best thing when your enemy speaks up? I, you know, the street ministry, people come up to me, they, they fight me. I used to fight it out. You know, the best thing is just let it go. You know, when people come up to me, you know, that's not what Jesus would do. I just tell them, listen, you, you're not a Bible reader. You don't study your Bible. 
and you know they'll say you know they'll, 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 they'll just the only one that really gets me angry in street ministry now is the the DJ. That's it. You just you know just let them go. A lot of times they're just cry baby because their diaper's wet and they want they want somebody to pay attention to them. Best thing is don't even listen to them. And you know what that that makes me angry when you don't give them attention or you answer back with the, with the Bible correctly. I was as a dumb man that opened his mouth. Shut up. Don't say nothing. You don't always have to say something. I need to learn that sometimes. And like I said, when the public ministry, sometimes you just don't say nothing. Guy came up to me. We went back to the, to the 500 today. And a guy come up to me. You know, the Bible's a fairy tale. He takes, you know, he's got the guts to say to me what he thinks and walks right off. Yeah, okay, whatever. To use a fairy tale. For me to be out there preaching the Bible, I guess it's not a fairy tale. I mean, I don't hear a lot of people on the street corner. Well, once upon a time, there was a little girl who went walking through the forest and she came to the three bears' house. And when she came to the three bears' house, she said, you know, I didn't see anybody, you know, preaching Goldilocks on three bears on the street. But I sure heard a lot of people and seen a lot of people preaching about Jesus. I mean, fairy tale, I mean... I don't see anybody trying to pass out stories about Cinderella to me. Unless they're trying to sell movie tickets or something like that. I'm not interested. Let's just keep your mouth shut. Thus, I was as a man that heareth not, and whose mouth are no reboot. I just let it go. I got enough trouble right now, David. David saying, I don't need more. I'm going to waste my time. For in thee, Lord, O Lord, do I hope, thou will hear, O Lord, my God. You know what David's put his concentration on? God, I got enough problems right now to you. God, help. Help me. Help me. I got a better hope. I tell people, you know, if you think you're going to heaven, you're not going to make it without Jesus because the Bible says Jesus is the blood the blessed hope, the better hope. For I said, David, hear me. Least otherwise they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to address to you. And you're going to keep me going because, hey, it's your enemy. And if you let me slip, you let me falter. They're going to badmouth you. If they badmouth me, I don't care. <laughs> Listen, I've fallen. I've fallen many times. And I've gone to God. And if anybody's going to say, well, Stalin did this, Stalin did okay, yeah, I did. Oh, well, what are you going to do about it? It's, if it's a sin, it's under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God don't remember it. I remember it, but I, I ask God to forgive me of it. Big deal. Big deal. I mean, he's faithful enough to, to cleanse me from all of the, to forgive me and cleanse me. Lord, if I falter and I'm doing right, then it's on you, Lord, not me, but most likely it's my fault. For I said, Fear, hear me, otherwise at least you should rejoice with me when my foot slippeth. Your foot's going to slip and they magnify themselves against me. For I am ready to halt, and my sorrows is continually before thee, before me. Excuse me. I am. I'm ready to stop, Lord. I'm ready to quit. You got a Christian who's trouble and problems? I'm ready to quit. I'm done. People think I'm going to. People think by my reaction lately, I'm, I'm going to quit. Uh, there's something wrong with me. There's troubles. There's problems. I understand. I, some people, I, I, I know they love me. I know they care about me. And I appreciate what they're doing. And there are some people who just don't know what they're talking about. So you shouldn't be saying what you're saying. Are you in the shoes that I am in? I have been put in this position twice in my life. I'm the kind of person I want a wife. Plain and simple. You don't know how I feel. You don't know how much I value the, the, the institution of God and marriage. 
You know where I stand. Right? You're talking about quitting. I'm not talking about quitting, but some people think I am. But there are people out there talking about quitting. Now watch. David says, I'm ready to halt. I'm ready to quit. And my sorrow is continuing. I am, I am just anxiety. I am just in fears. I am just crying. I am just upset. I'm going to quit. David, don't. Wait. Verse 18. For I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. You know what David said? I'm ready to quit. Oh, David, don't. That's not what David's talking about. You know what David's talking about right now? Okay, Lord, stop it. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to stop until everything's made right. And there's one way I'm going to stop, Lord God. What? I am, I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry. Lord God, get down. I am sorry for my sins. That's it. That's all I can do. I ask you to forgive me my sins. They would have to bring an offering to the tabernacle. Me, I bring the blood of Jesus Christ today in the church. Lord God, I, all right, never mind the enemy. I, I'm sore. I'm in pain. I got, I'm i sorry, God. I am really sorry. And David would bring his offering. I bring the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, when I had this ear infection that kept going, going I, I, I told my pastor, they're just nice, man. I'm confessing every sin I know possible. That's what the Lord wanted. But sometimes, you know, you need to stop. Step out of the trouble. Step out of the problem and say, Lord, let's get right. And I told you, and I'll tell you, and I practice myself, I, I am not being a hypocrite. There are times I just, I, when I'm in bed when I had a wife, but everyone's asleep. I'll be laying in bed. I can't sleep. I'll say, Lord God, What is hindering you and me from having, from having a good... What right now in my life is sin and iniquity? And when the Lord speaks to me, then I confess and get it right. I say, Lord, is this where you want me? Daytona Beach, Florida, is this where you want me right now? Am I where you want me? Am I doing what you want me to do? Let's just stop right now. Let's put, let's put time off for a moment, God. And somebody else will say, oh, don't quit, don't quit. Yeah, I want to quit. Right now, I want to quit. Because I want to get right with God. I want God to speak to me. I want to put my sins away. I want to find out, maybe i got to change direction. Maybe i can, maybe I can go back. Maybe I, I, I've been going the wrong direction. I mean, okay, get to the point. And this happened to me in Boston. We're going down the road. And we're just, I don't know where we were. And my wife just finally says, Go over to that gas station and get directions. I had to pull into that gas station. Whatever. I, I think it was a gas station. I don't. But I had to pull in that gas What did I have to do to pull in that gas station? I had to stop. Somebody said, well, keep on going, keep on going. I'd be still driving around Boston. I would never know where to get where I was going. Maybe eventually I would have got there, but probably not. I had to stop, get out of the car, and say, okay, where I'm going. This is the place I'm looking for, women's uh, hospital, or whatever, bring women's hospital, something like that. Guy gave me the directions, wrote it down. Okay? Now I got the direction. We need to stop. We need to say, God, where I am right now, is that where you want me? Where do you want me to go? Give me the directions. Do I have a flat tire? I mean, is there something wrong with, with, with the journey right now? I got to check the oil? What is it between you and me, God, right now? Stop. Let's, let's, how are we doing right now? Let's get a checkup. When you go to the doctor's office, they say, Mr. Haver, come on in. And, you know, they, they check you out. And then you stop and you sit under that patient's table and you wait for the doctor to talk to you. And when the doctor gives you instructions, when the doctor gives you, you know, the diagnosis, when the doctor tells you information, and then when the doctor's finished talking, you get up, you leave, and you hopefully will follow that advice. Sometimes when someone's having life troubles and life problems in their life, and they're, I'm going to stop. I'm going to quit. 
Maybe in the case of David, we're seeing today, maybe that's the best thing for them to do. Maybe they just need to relax. Sometimes when people got anxiety and problems, and I've been there, maybe the best thing to do is stop. Where are you going? I'm going to go take a nap. I'm going to go talk to the Lord while I close my eyes and my pillow. I'm just going to speak to the Lord. And if I just fall asleep, I'm going to fall asleep. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to call my pastor on the phone. I'm going to say, Pastor, can we meet together? And I just want to talk. Or maybe you just want to talk to God. So David... Verse 18, I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. That is true repentance. But, okay, so if I confess my sins, preacher, everything's going to be hunky-dory. God's going to give me a yacht. God's going to give me bright white teeth. And he's going to smile. And he's going to be great. And everything's going to be wonderful. And I'm going to get that job. I'm going to get everything I want. But, Sometimes butts are bad in the Bible. My enemies are lively. <laughs> All right, you got it right with God, but your enemies are not going to get it right. <laughs> I repented of my sins. Lord God, I'm sorry. Lord God, forgive me. Thank you, Lord God. And I go to the street ministry, and I got an enemy there. He's not disappearing. I hope he does, but I mean, not... I pray for the guy's soul, but I hope his music disappears. But he has it. The devil hasn't disappeared. The enemy. How the tracks we got out this weekend with, with, with the, the 500? How many tracks were torn up? How many tracks were thrown on the ground? How many tracks were put in the garbage? How many people told no? Well, see, devil, I repented of my sin. We got right. We prayed. You know, the pastor and me prayed, and, and, and the family prayed, and, and the man from church prayed, and we're going to go to 500, and we're going to get all those tracks out, and everybody's going to get saved. Glory, hallelujah. No. No. But my enemies are lively. They're alive. They're well. And they are strong. Remember, David's still wounded. David, listen, when, when David said, Lord God, however he does, I know, Lord God, you know, forgive me. I am sorry for this sin. Lord, forgive me. And he didn't look at it and say, oh, okay, I'm healed. That didn't work. That's that, fault, that's that foolishness of faith healing. That's that foolishness of the prosperity gospel. It did not happen for David. And they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. <laughs> After David repented and got right. Some people falsely teach. Some people deceitfully treat. You know, if you come and do what we tell you, this prayer, and you put money into play, and, and you know, you, everything's going to be hunky-dory. And I wonder how many Christians are in the hospital that's right behind my back right now. Uh, I think about a mile, two miles away from here, I think. I got to drive. I got to figure out. This. I mean, I don't know distance. But there's a hospital behind me. And there are Christians who love the Lord in that hospital, I guarantee, right now. If not, there's a hospital that way up north. Not too far from me. And they're repenting. They're getting right. And they love the Lord. They also that render evil for good are my adversaries. That was the life of Jesus. Jesus healed people. Jesus took care of people. Jesus fed people. Jesus prayed for people. Jesus comforted people. Jesus resurrected people. And he had a group of people say, I saw him do this. I'm lying. My nose has grown. He had all those people, and then when he comes to his time, crucify him. What, what, what shall I do with Jesus? Crucify him. What about Barabbas? We'll take him. What did Barabbas do for you? He murdered people. He committed insurrection. But you take Jesus, you crucify him, and we'll take Barabbas. Now that's evil for good. 
adversary, enemy, because I follow that, that I follow the thing that which is good. What is that? Jesus, God, the law. Don't you think you're going to go out there with the Bible and everybody's going, oh, that's the Bible? Let me do it. All they live God in Christ Jesus shall serve for persecution. You want, you really want to see how well you're going to build an enemy? All right, you, uh, you know, I don't suggest this, but within time, but take your first public ministry and try to go witnessing to people outside of Catholic Church and see how well they're going to love you. I've done it. And within time, you'll find that they don't love you. You'll find within time they'll hate your guts. And they'll do anything to stop you. Forsake me not, O oh Lord. Everybody else has. Oh my God. Be not far from me. Modern Bible 5 say, OMG. Make haste. Hurry up, Lord God. Help me. I'm still in pain. Still suffering. Still got enemy. Still got problems, O oh Lord. My salvation. Look at that. My, not Nathan's. His salvation. His salvation's being who? God's. The Lord's. Atta boy, David. 